Hey, everybody, this is Marla Schultz with Flip the Switch. Thank you so much for joining me. We go uh, live on governorsradio.com or facebook.com slash govsradio. I am so excited for this show because I have two of my favorite people on the show. We got Jen Plotsky, the divine, multi-hyphenate, talented uh, actress, director, producer. She's on the festival circuit. Her films are winning all these awards. And then there's Mr. Needy over here, Ken Perlstein, who we love, who is a regular on the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. He's a recurring uh, character. He plays Dougie. He's been on numerous Showtime shows and HBO. But I love the fact that my two favorite people have collaborated on a pilot that is tearing up the festival. So welcome, Jen and Ken. Thank you so much. You. That was a Thanks. lovely introduction. Oh, well, you're welcome. You're welcome. I First of all, I'm so thrilled that you guys uh, found the time. And you know what? The fact that we can't get together in person, this is like the next best thing or so they say, yeah. right? Yeah, definitely. Yep. Thank so, God we've had this during this whole time, right? Ooh, can you absolutely. imagine? Can you imagine this pandemic like in the 80s? No way. Would have no, been. I we'd think be, we'd all be smoking getting, crack. We, we'd be getting <laughs> on yeah, crack and etch a sketch. Remember those? Yeah. Things? Yes. <laughs> well, no, Valium. Valium and uh, Quaaludes were really big back then. I don't know if you guys ever dabbled. I didn't dabble, but that was like some really, you know, big popular stuff. But anyway, no, no, let's talk good. about how how am I doing? Ken, do you want to tell us about your pilot? Sure. It's a sort of a deep dive into the world of this guy, Eli Meyer, a, uh, who's a recovering alcoholic, and just takes a look at relationships and second chances. So uh, this guy's kind of larger than life, and he represents you know, many types of people, a lot of different people who are trying to come back, trying to get a relationship back with their daughter, going through divorce. So also alcoholism, right? Yeah, recovery. That's uh, yeah, I mentioned the recovery. So you're dealing with life. He's dealing with life on life's terms. Sometimes it's not easy. Uh, sometimes there's victories and then steps backwards. So it's exciting. You know, it's uh, it's life. Never a dull moment. It's yes, life. It is. The slice and, of life. So. And I love the fact that you have collaborated with Jen. So Jen, what you're not an act, you're not one of the actors, but you became a producer. So what attracted you to this project besides working with the lovely and talented Mr. Pearlstein? Tell them what came about. <laughs> well, working with the lovely and talented Mr. Pearlstein was the first box checked. Um, and beyond that, he sent me the script and he said, you know, I'm looking for a producer. And I said, great, I'll give it a read. And it was still, I think, going through, he was still sort of working on the final script, but um, yeah. it, the bones of it were there. And so I read it and I just loved the character so much. And there were already um, a few actors attached to it that I really wanted to work with. Anthony Robert Grasso, Amanda Brooke Lerner. Um, so it was kind of a very easy decision for me. Well, and also, and also congratulations, because every time I turn on Instagram or Facebook, there's both of you, how am I doing, awarded, you know, this festival award, and, and it's this festival. So what are some of the festivals that you have won awards or major recognitions? Um, I'll tell you, 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 sure, you want to talk about that? Huh? Go ahead. So, well, recently um, we were just at Holly Shorts in Los Angeles and uh, Soho International in New York. Obviously both were virtual, um, but those were two of our really big festival goals. And so we're like beyond thrilled to even be selected. Soho uh, nominated us for best long form pilot, which was really great. Um, prior to that, we screened, uh, well, we were uh, a selection for Manhattan Film Festival, also Studio City last year in Los Angeles when that was still in person. Ken got to attend that one. Wow. Um, yeah, and we were, there's a, a WRPN Global Webisode Competition, which we entered and won Best Actor, Best Director, Colleen Davy Janes, the Best Actor was for Ken, and Best Pilot. So we've just been having a really great time and, you know, we're just thrilled that it's getting out there and, and, People are seeing it. It's been a and, ride. Go ahead, Ken. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying it's just it's just been a ride. And uh, I 
I could not have been more happy that Jan accepted, you know, coming on board because, you know, it's, uh, it, was a, it was a long process for me and a learning process as far as what producing is, what goes into shooting something. So I went through several directors and, uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of changes, producers. And Jen is, Jen's a good friend of mine, a, a talented actress, uh, a, pro, a great producer. Uh, she gets shit done. You know, I like women who get shit done. And I just said, you know what? I'm in limbo here. Can you <laughs> read it? Tell me what you think. She said, you want me to come on board? I'm like, yes. Wow. <laughs> Please. Wow. I mean, I would love to do, you know, work with story. the two of you for sure. So let me bounce this back to Jen. Jen, I mean, I... I I, you know, I read your resume and I was like, oh my God, this girl, you are, you know, the, the doyen of the, uh, you know, the, the internet, what do you call it? The uh, Indie Film Festival. I mean, and I, I was just reading some of your credits, Dinner with Schwartzy, Best Ensemble, and it was at the French Independent, uh, was it Spirit Awards and Cons? I mean, one award after the other, like, where do you find the time to do everything you do? Um, <laughs> and have a it's life a, and be well, married. Honestly, I, I really work at all of this. I do have a lot of projects going at once. It's, it's a lot, but I, you know, it's a labor of love and it's stuff that I work on honestly 24 seven. Wow. Um, and some, not all of the projects I'm, you know, like for my, for example, my dinner with Schwartzy, I'm not a producer on that. I was an actor. Yeah. Um, so that has had its own wild ride on the festival circuit, like wildly successful. And it's a great film. Um, but, you know, our director and, and writer sort of handle all of that. So, I mean, you know what I mean? It's like I have different hats on for each project. So some are, are larger workloads than others. But yeah, it's, uh, you know all day, every day thing. <laughs> no, it's incredible. And I mean, you, it's, it, every time I turn on Instagram, there's another fabulous picture of you. It was like movie poster, movie poster. You're not hearing any kind of jealousy. It's much more admiration. And I, I mean, this whole past year, I've been sitting here like, what the hell did I accomplish? And it's like, well, I know what Jen's accomplished. <laughs> I know what Ken has accomplished. It was like another award, another award. You know, you know, Facebook can make you seem like you've accomplished so much. Oh, that, yeah, but you true. have, Mr. Yeah. Self-Deprecating, you have, you have. So let me ask, I want to ask both of you, what got you into this masochistic uh, industry and what keeps you engaged? So Ken, you want to kick that one off? Sure. I mean, why did I get into this to, to begin with? My son asked me that uh, a few weeks ago in a car. And he said, Dad, why did you want to become an actor? And I, you know, I, I guess for me, it started, you know, when I was a kid and uh, growing up the way I did in a, uh, a really challenging environment. I'll just leave it at that. And uh, I always had this fantasy that I, I wish I was from another family. You know, oh yeah, imagination, and uh, I had I was adept at mimicking, mimicking things, mimicking sounds, mimicking people, and so all that kind of played a role in my imagination, and then creativity, other forms of creativity, uh, at different parts of my life. You know, I was also an athlete too, as what you call a Jew jock. <laughs> the Jews who play sports but don't own the teams, but uh, you know, so that's that was that, and. Uh, I guess, you know what, I, I, I didn't have anything else to fall back on. I wasn't an academic. Uh, I was dyslexic with ADD. They throw you in a resource room. So my- <laughs> sure. put you on the short bus. I did. I, I, <laughs> I was the short bus. I was the cheese mobile, the window lickers, you know, so that was one of them. You know, I was certainly a window licker. Uh, <laughs> you know, and they just break us out to play sports, you know? Yes. They, yeah, right. They're like, here, lay off the rip. And let's go out and kill somebody. Okay, here. But, oh my uh, God, Ritalin's great. You know, it prevented me from doing coke because if you're on Ritalin, you don't need coke. You know? Right. <laughs> right. You know. Absolutely. Uh, that's a whole other. That's a whole other podcast. But um, I think you know when I got to a my final high school, I went to many different many different schools, a lot of different schools. Uh, I keep saying everything's a different story, but I went to a lot of different schools. My last school was in Bath, Maine. 
at a, a school called Hyde and uh, was there for two years. It was mandatory. Performing arts was mandatory. Three sports was mandatory, which was wow. performing arts for me. Uh, even though I, I loved performing in front of little groups of people and I was great at that. I would make people laugh, I would make jokes. I would impersonate every single teacher. I would impersonate a couple of students. Uh, their, their looks changed when I got to them, you know, like, wait a minute. Uh, but, they put, but, but they put me in performing arts. They put me in a, in a uh, the school musical. And uh, I didn't want to do it because it involved singing. You know, I wasn't confident. I'm like, I don't want to sing. They're like, yeah, you're going to be a 50s Elvis guy. And you're going to go out and sing the song, Do You Want to Dance? And I was like, oh, no, you're not. They're like, yes, you will, uh, unless you want to chip ice. So uh, that's what I did. Hilarious. Uh, and it was great. Something happened. Something happened. You know, you when mean, I the, there, you, you just, something flipped the switch? It really uh -huh. it, it flipped a, see? Flipped the switch. Um, it. Yeah, it. it just, there was something about <laughs> it. There was something about it. And I really... I just lost myself. I'm like, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to look like an ass, then you know what? I'm going to get, I'm going to throw everything I can, I can't into it. And it hit me because we were walking through town one day and some townies, some locals like ran, stopped a car. There was a whole bunch of people, teenagers. And I'm like, oh God, this is going to be bad. And they all got out there like, yo, you were the, you were the Elvis dude, man. You were that ah. awesome. So um, I was like, wow. I didn't have anything else. So I did that in college. I was a major in theater. I walked on to play football. I was in a fraternity, but I was a theater major and it was nothing else. And I got to New York finally. And um, when did you jump into stand up? You know, um, gosh, I, get, I think the very first time was when I was in um, graduate school. I was getting my MFA in like 96, nine. And uh, Billy That's when Crystal. I started. Yeah, well, Billy Crystal was on uh, inside the actor studio. So I was going to the actor studio MFA program and he was a guest and he had gone to Marshall on a baseball scholarship. Marshall's in Huntington, West Virginia, if uh, those people don't know. Uh, so I said, wow, you know, students get to ask questions. I said, Bill, you know, I went to, I didn't call him Bill. I said, Billy, you know, I said, <laughs> Crystal. I actually said, Mr. Crystal, because I was shitting my pants to begin with. And I said, hey, I went to Marshall and, um, uh, I know you went to Marshall too. And wow, you know, um, I love what you do. I also do impersonations and voices. And man, there's a lot of character work in West Virginia. And I sat down. He goes, no, wait a minute. Stand back up. Uh, I have a question. Tell me about the characters in West Virginia. Oh, wow. He said, what are the characters like in West Virginia? What are the characters like in West Virginia? So, well, Give us know, one. I, well, I did the whole rendition of Jews in West Virginia. I pulled it right out of my butt. I'm Let's like, hear oh. it. I said, you know, I never heard Jews talk with an Appalachian dialect before. <laughs> I'm in Huntington, West Virginia. So I was like, Maruka Tadanol, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a Jew gasm. <laughs> like a Jew gasm? The Jews of Hazard. Jews of Hazard. Oh my God, that's really, really right? funny. Just the good old Jew. That was Jew gasm. <laughs> Yeah, it sounded like jugasm. That was funny. I ever seen some jugasm? Yeah. Now, Jen, with the name Jen Plotsky, Jew or not a Jew? Not a Jew. Okay. Jew. Thank you. Welcome to our game. Jew or not a Jew? Jew or not a Jew? Hey, it's getting around Christmas time. Um, but I'm sure you've been asked that before because you know everybody's like, "What did you do?" Ah, he took a Plotsky. It's a good Yiddish word. Yes. True. Um, yeah, I do get asked that a lot, but you're not. Yeah. But I'm I don't not. know. If you, anyway, moving on. But Ken, I loved your story because I think there's something about stand up and uh, performing. Like for me, it was, you know, it saved being funny, saved my ass from getting, you know, my ass kicked by the tough girls or I get out of trouble. And, you know, you make a teacher laugh. They're like, all right get back in, you know, get, you don't need to stand in the hall. Like that always saves me. But how about you, Jen? What made you want to be an actress and a comedic actress at that? Well, it's been pretty much my whole life. I, when my, my dad, it was always super into adventure movies and, you know, raised us on Indiana Jones and James Bond and stuff like that. And so from a very early 
age, I, I, he took me to see uh, uh, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark well before I should have seen it. And he didn't know that there were going to be, you know, it was like skin melting Nazis at the end of it. And so <laughs> I was terrified by that. But I was also like the whole movie up to that point was incredible. And I was just staring at this going, oh, my God, this is, you know, what, what I want to do. And um, yeah, ever since then, I've just always wanted to make movies. And I've just sort of, it's always been my goal. There was never really a plan B. I started acting when I was a kid in grade school and wow. carried that through um, high school. My high school luckily had a really, really, really top-notch performing arts program. Um, and you're and from so, where, you're from the Midwest, right? Yeah, in Chicago. Well, in the uh, Chicago suburbs. And it was a lot better than most kids have access to at that age. And so I was lucky to sort of begin training there. Then I went, um, furthered that in college and then came to New York. Awesome. Yeah. Now, I, I, I mean, I think every, any performer, when they listen to this, I can completely relate. I remember I wanted to get out of my family and I would always try and morph into other families. But <laughs> I remember that I wanted to be in TV so bad. I believe my mother caught me with my dad's tool, like a screwdriver, unscrewing the back of the TV, thinking I could get on TV through the back of the TV. Oh my God. I love it. I love but, it. You know, I think we're all blessed with a very strong imagination, you know, that yeah. is still crackling. Um, I, I, how do you, like if some, what would you tell a young actor or a young actor dealing with, you know, getting into the business now, which I can't even imagine, but how would yeah. you tell them to deal with you know, the challenge is with social media and, and dealing with rejection and all that stuff. Ken, what do you, how, what would you, kind of advice would you give? Dealing with the rejection, uh, dealing with the whole hustle. Uh, you know what, it, it, you do have to have a thick skin. Mm -hmm. And I take it, you know, from what I've learned is that I just, I just, I rip, I kind of tear up the sides. After each audition, I, I tear up the sides, I throw them away. And I move That's on. smart. It's been a tradition for a few years. And, and it helps you know what? To, it must be you know, working because landing a role on the talented Mrs. Ma the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, that's a huge kudos. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, it's uh, it took me a while to get into that office. And once I did, it took me three times of getting called back. And that's the other thing too, is, you know, you learn to what they call book the room, book mm -hmm. the casting room, just book the room. Don't what does that, that mean? So a lot I of need help. Are, right. So a lot of people are focused on, I got to book the role. I got to get this role. I got to get right. this role. And so if you don't want, I want to, I want to impress the shit out of these people. Right. I just want to have fun. And that's the thing when you go in there there to have fun. You're not going up in front of a firing squad, you know, going, okay, oh my God, the camera started recording. Here I go. Um, no, you're there to have fun. And they're there. They want you to get the part. They really want you to get this. They right. want you to be the one. Uh, and you just build up a relationship with them. They keep calling you back. So all these shows like Mrs. May, so I kept getting called back until, um, you know, my agent said, they want to see you for a callback for a recurring role. Amazing. But what, I think that's great. And I, I, I'm sorry for cutting you off, but when you say, you know, have like book the room, can you just give a specific answer? And then Jen, I want you to sure. answer that too, because you're obviously booking the room too. Book the room. Uh, it means- in, but, you walk in and, but you're walking in and then you have the casting a director or assistant and they've seen a hundred people like, do you schmooze? Like, how do you, how do you temper that? You know, it, it, you just got to feel it out. You know, how well do you know the people? I mean, right. uh, there's, you know, a few people I've been in to see many, many times. So I have sort of a little rapport with them. I can joke sure. with them. The first time though, like, you, you know, oh, thank you so much. Like how kiss-assy should you be or not be? You know what? Say thank you. 
Um, don't ever say, oh my God, I messed up. Oh my God, I messed up. Or oh, I would really like this. I You're not supposed to say that. Uh, oh, here's the thing. When they give you <laughs> this, don't say that. I'm like, I'm like, I'm sorry I was late. Uh, they don't give a shit. Don't tell them you were late. They don't care. Okay. Jen, what about you? How do you book the room? Well, I agree with everything Ken just said. And I, th I definitely never point out that you've screwed up if you have. First of all, they may not even realize it. And so you pointing it out doesn't really help your game. And if you do, you know what I mean? Like if you do, you just keep going. It's like, everyone's gonna screw up. They're not, one of the biggest, th someone told me one time that casting directors are not looking for perfection. They're looking for an artist. They're looking for someone that they can work with that, you know what I mean? The, the, you're not just a robot that's gonna be able to recite it perfectly. Like who cares if you screw up the lines, you know? Right. right. Um, but I think that booking the room, it's just what Ken said, like you really have to read it. And, you know, being artificial or kissing ass or whatever, I think, that, you know, most people, industry or otherwise, like see Not right into through it. that. And it, it. Yeah, and it's just, it's a turn off, you know? And I think that if you just go in and you're genuine and you're grateful, because frankly, yeah. Yeah. How many actors are there, right? And how only a select few are going to get called in and one person's going to book it. Right. And whether you book it or not, you should be damn grateful to be the one that's called in the room, you know? Yeah. And so that's kind of how I always do it. I lead with gratitude. I build those relationships. I thank them. I follow up and I thank them. And then when I see how them How do you again, follow up? Me. How do you follow? Do you send notes? Yeah, always. No. So, Interesting, because uh, my uh, I've been people like oh yeah no people don't do that anymore. It shows your age, and I was like really I think showing it's up at their door, right? Mm -hmm. But I think now, sending a note is a big deal, right? I think that people, you know, I don't think it takes anything to say thank you, and I think that people will never lift you know raise an eyebrow at someone thanking them and I think that there just needs you know it's there's not there's no ask in it there's no like hey thanks so much for bringing me in what did you think of my work don't you know no it's just a, a thank you like thanks so much great to see you see you soon That's have awesome. a great holiday Enjoy now, have, a weekend. have you been auditioning a lot uh virtually yes me yeah yeah a lot awesome congratulations yeah. thank you for uh tv films or just everything um, 95% of it has been TV, um, a couple commercial and a couple of films. Amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. How about you, Thank Ken? You. Uh, I've had, yeah, I've had started to pick up with auditions. Uh, I've had a producer session, uh, for Blue Bloods. Awesome. Uh, that's, the, here's another thing I wanted to go back to real quick in terms of booking a room. Um, one day out of nowhere before the pandemic, uh, before 2020 was supposed to get started, I got an email out of nowhere from this casting director who I've, I haven't booked with her, but I've been in that room many, many times. And just an email and she said, hey, I just saw you on uh, Mrs. Maisel. I loved you in, in, the, in the season two and I just saw season three and you were fantastic. I loved your work and we will be calling you in. Nice, I right. love that. I don't know, a cast, a major casting director. So I didn't ask, but if you build the relationship. Right, exactly. You are. I've been, I mean, uh, all kidding aside, I, uh, I seem to, I've cornered the market on uh, TSA agents and police and I'm, I'm not, I am not complaining. Um, I, I always saw myself as something else besides a TSA agent. And uh, anyway, I kid, but I've been called back several times to rooms. And I've definitely, you know, been auditioning more, which is nice. And it's really nice to feel confident uh, instead of, you know, I used to worry about the lines. I, I couldn't uh, memorize. And the, you mentioned Amanda Brooke Lerner. She taught me a great technique. You know, you read your lines like this and you just do one letter on each of the words. And all of a sudden I was memorizing like six pages in no time, which was huge. Love it. But anyway, talk, I want to talk about, listen, we're all funny. I know, Jen, have you ever done stand up? I have not. I've thought about it, but I have to say that I give major props to stand-up comedians because I think that is probably the ballsiest thing you can do. I mean, you, that's like, you're just out there by yourself and you're 
just balls to the wall, as they say. I mean, yeah. yeah. So, and I've seen both of you guys perform and you're both so freaking hilarious and I love it. And I'm so happy to be in the audience watching you <laughs> and well, not on the stage. <laughs> yes. Well, I, you know what, but the thing is you have such a great, you just, you hang well with the comedic mind and you obviously have oh. awesome comedic chops. What has, has humor ever helped you, you know, flip the switch when you've been down or depressed or, you know, is, is, can, is humor a go-to if you're ever feeling sad or bummed out? Yes. I think that, I mean, especially like as actors, if, you know, you have to just laugh at yourself and you have right. to be able to shrug shit off because it's, it is a tough business and, you know, most of the time it's not going to go your way and you're going to screw up. Like you're going to screw up and yep. you're like, so I got to that point where I was just like so hard on myself for certain things. Like I've always been a perfectionist my whole life. And, you know, on the one hand, I sort of pride myself on that because it really pushes me to do my best all the time, but you can't do your best. You know, there's right. going to be times when you just screw up. And so I realized, you know, several years ago when I was auditioning a lot that you know, I would really like let it like consume my mind. Like, oh my God, I screwed up. This casting director hates me. I'm never going to work. Like they're never going to call me in again. They're sitting there thinking right now how much I suck. <laughs> no, they're not. They don't care about me. <laughs> and so right. I finally was just like, I got to the point where I was like, I just have to laugh at myself and be, and you know, even make an even bigger deal about how ridiculous I just was, you know? And that's how I kind of, get through it like that's the only way to get through it i think got, a, got it wife. what makes you like what are some of your favorite funny movies me personally yeah oh my god it's so funny whenever someone asks me a question about a movie i've seen i don't know thousands of movies in my lifetime i'm like not i never read books when i was a kid i only watched movies me too terrible but i should have read more but <laughs> And then someone asks you what movies you, you know, you like, and you're like, I can't think of a single movie I've ever seen. Come back to me. <laughs> okay. You know, it's funny. Like I, I'm a big fan of John Cleese and I love, he's got this really great quote and uh, which I think. I love really, him. Yeah. He's super, super funny, but I, I loved A Fish Called Wanda. And I just remember A Fish Called Wanda was like that movie and something about Mary and Ace Ventura, Pet, Pet Detective. Eddie Murphy, like his stand up makes me pee in my pants. And I just watched it about a month ago with my husband and uh, my, my sister and brother-in-law. And we were howling laughing and my 18 year old nephew was down and we were really self-conscious because it was so inappropriate and yeah. on PC. But when I went back and I watched Fish Called Wanda, it didn't make me laugh, which was really odd. Now, Ken, Ken, we're going to come back to the movies, but Ken, do you like, what are some of your favorite funny movies and do they still, you know, make you laugh as they did back over yonder? You know what? There, uh, there. I mean, of course, there's Mel Brooks. I mean, everybody loves Blazing yes. Saddles. Everybody likes, you know. You're uh, the two thousand year old man. Oh my God. Yep. <laughs> Do you remember that? You, you got some. You got some corn. You got some corn on your face. <laughs> that makes me laugh. You know? Did you? And he couldn't say it. You got. You got. You got some corn you on your like face. Like two, which was ahead of its time. One of my favorite movies, the Kentucky Fried Movie. Oh man, I think I watched that one time and I don't really remember it. You gotta go I back. Remember it. it was way ahead of its time and it was about I write that therapy. Down. It was so, I mean, some of it was so wrong, but it was so true because it was talking about the silliness of life. Mm. And they were just, it was smart, funny comedy <laughs> back then, but it was just, I saw it as a kid and I'm like, oh my God, this is hysterical because they did parodies off of like the movie Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee or Towering Inferno or, you know, they did things off of racism, you know. Uh, right. But so did Mel Brooks. I mean, Mel Brooks yeah. was, oh, you know, springtime for Hitler. <laughs> you know, the producers. <laughs> for Hitler in Germany. <laughs> that was the best. Um, 
I wanted to, oh, uh, just about Eddie. I just, you know, had a total, total brain fart. Uh, hopefully it comes back to me. I don't know if this happens to anybody else, but you're like, so, Plyla. All the time. Well, listen, because I want to, while you're thinking about it, because I want to piggyback on what you were saying, because as soon as you said John Cleese, we were, I, I was a huge Monty Python fan growing up, and Fish Called Wanda was, I don't even know how or when I saw it, but I remember seeing it. And I still, to this day, think it's one of the greatest movies ever made. I am, I've been obsessed with Jamie Lee Curtis my whole life. Yeah. And Kevin Klein is genius. And that entire film, I, I thought, I just thought it was brilliant. And I still, I still do. I, it still cracks me up. Michael Palin, I- When's the last time, I know. The, 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 the stuttering. I mean, Could you yeah. imagine making fun of somebody with stuttering? But I mean, like the, that fish, scene where fish. they're right. Where, that scene where he eats the fish. fish. I mean, it's epic. <laughs> that Kevin Klein in that role is, it's an amazing performance. Oh, yeah. But also, you know, I watched- Does it make you laugh now? Like when's the last time you watched yes. it? It does. Um, I okay. actually watched it. I hadn't watched it for a long time. And I, and it's, you know, there's some, like, parts of it are so ridiculous. Like, he's so ridiculous. But yeah. that scene where, like, they're talking on the bridge and he, you know, uh, uh, about all of the mistakes he's made, like, you know, Aristotle's not Belgian and all that stuff. Yes. I just die. I die. And the Blues Brothers. Oh, God, another An great Animal one. House. Animal House. Yep. Let me, I found the quote and then I want to, rem I want to, I, we just watched a documentary called uh, Class Action Park and there used to be this water park. Yeah, I just saw it. Hilarious. You have these yeah. people from Fair. the 80s. Just I used to like, go there. We used to go there when we were really? kids. really? Yeah, because I lived, when I was a kid, we lived in, um, like I was born in Chicago, but I spent a large portion of my childhood in central New Jersey and we would go to Action Park and all it's all true. True. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean that that coming down that water slide that where people would get clogged and then I the guy was just it's like he must have been smoking pounds and pounds of pot to I mean yeah. Did you get injured there? No, thankfully. And wow. I mean I really didn't have I didn't know that there were injuries that were like that extensive. And the one, the one kid that died, or I think there were actually Couple. several kids that died. Yeah. Couple. Like there was one drowned, one hit his head on those rocks. Like, yeah, thankfully, but I mean, it was always overcrowded. It was, it, it was a mess. Anyway, sorry. I segued. No, 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 no. It's I, but I saw that and we were laughing because you have these guys being like, yeah, it was the eighties. I mean, the shit <laughs> that I got away with, I was having yeah. keg parties. Yeah, egg yeah. parties in my house, and my parents went to like the social at yep. Temple Bethel, and we'd have it all. We were smoking cigarettes, and my mother has a nose of a bomb sniffing dog, and we just we got. <laughs> can't, my parents were never there. I mean, it was crazy. What well, we got away. Yeah. Did. Stuff that our parents even did in the eighties. I mean, you know, my bar mitzvah was like in nineteen eighty three, and we had a hamburger hot dog party <laughs> but and the dj was a was this off-duty cop who was drunk as shit you know this drunk off-duty cop and he's you know bar mitzvahs they call in the family he's like all right let's hear it for great grandma oh she's hot <laughs> all right put that that skirt grandma let's see it yeah great oh my God. i mean we burned we we, get, we burned half the golf course you know oh that's <laughs> funny Parents were doing coke, weed. Wow, it was the eighties. I mean, right. You know. My parents were gone. I they got me a keg for my sweet sixteen. <laughs> so they, we had a keg party for my sweet sixteen. My parents were upstairs, and maybe they even went out. But it was just like beer hall, beer everywhere. Everybody was so wasted. Oh my god! Crazy, crazy, crazy times. So listen, what uh, like what do you do now to make yourself happy in the pandemic? And you know, especially when you're with the same people over and over, you know, for the last six months. Like, what what do you do, Jen, that makes you happy? That you know might flip might flip the switch. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> um, I have actually spent a large portion of the pandemic working on um, pandemic films, like. We're, wow. We've been making films. In fact, one of them with Ken. Um, we've been basically like working remotely and seeing, you know, like the, the a writer will give us a script and we're like, how can we shoot this 
not together, you know? And so, okay, this actor is going to shoot this at home and this actor is going to shoot this yeah. at home. And then we're going to piece it together to make it look Very like cool. the same place. Yeah. Um, a director, uh, Jeremiah Kipp that I work with frequently, he and I have been collaborating on a lot of these. He's, he's made a lot of them and I've worked on some of, some of the ones under that umbrella. Um, and it's been really great and really nice to have something creative to do. Sure. So that we're not staring at the wall, like going crazy. Well, I think that's great because I know I've, you know, I came out of a tough time and I, when the pandemic hit, I was like, okay, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And I, I really had to let go of feeling as if I wasn't that productive and not beating myself oh my up. Yes. Kudos to you for being so productive. And uh, what about you, Ken? I mean, it's on and off. I mean, you know, there was in the very beginning, there was all this, now's the time for you to write your feature film, get it green-lighted. Now's the time to start writing novels and all this other stuff. And, and then every, every comic on Instagram was going live every three seconds. And, uh, yes. you know, with, I mean, so I, so, you know, I did a lot of Zoom stand-up comedy in the beginning. Uh, by the way, never once did I ever pretend that I had a microphone in my hand because- <laughs> That's funny. I can't- I, Or pretend you're turning a, a light switch on and off. <laughs> See, here I am. I don't, this, this is not connected to anything, but here I am. <laughs> no, no, put it down, asshole. You're not, I, you don't have- So uh, funny. I, I don't, I people did to, to get through, you know, because I also have a kid. I was a seven-year-old, uh, so remote schooling had to start right away and we were wow. trying to figure it out. Um, so we had all this stuff to figure out. I mean, yeah, there were times where I wanted to be um, productive and sometimes I do allow myself times where I'm like, I just don't feel like doing anything. Yeah. I'm upset. There was a lot of stuff that I was supposed to start with production. Sure. Some of it. But have yeah. you, you've, you've been working out. I, I just, when this hit, I, I was like the cupcake queen. And now I, I actually just did a workout tape, you know, kill the muffin top today. So I'm really, really <laughs> proud of myself. for that. <laughs> awesome. And Jen, you look fabulous. So I'm sure you've been working out. You, you've been taking care of yourself. Yeah. You know, we did the same thing. Like in the beginning, it was like, wow, you know, we, there was nothing to do and there was no, sense of FOMO because nobody was doing anything. So we were right. like, Ooh, yeah, let's do a puzzle and drink wine at two o'clock in the afternoon. Right. And so after a little bit of that, I was like, um, okay, we're eating like Kings and we're gaining weight and this can go South real fast. I said, real we fast. under control. And so we have ever since I would say May, maybe been working out about five to six days a week. My, me and my husband both, he's lost 50 pounds. Wow. Six I've months. Lost almost 20. Yeah. Wow. And, um, What's yeah. your secret? So I'm like, and honestly, I, it's something that I had been wanting to do even before the pandemic. And so I, I was very grateful for the time to do it and just the space to kind of, you know, get my head in it and be like, now's the time. But Amazing. also I wanted to say that what, what you said earlier I think that, you know, everyone like to each their own in this time, I think it's perfectly fine to sit and do absolutely nothing with, you know what I mean? It's like, this is time to, the, it, it really was, and I, I say this delicately because it was very difficult for very many people, sure. but this time was also a gift. And so if you just relax and, you know, get back to yourself, that's totally fine too. I like, I really commend and appreciate that in, in people I, doing that. I agree because I've had this discussion and we got to wrap up soon, but we, I've had the discussion that I just feel like this is a complete spiritual, physical, emotional, you know, uh, globally total reset, like the universe and something bigger than ourselves is like, yeah. you guys have fucked this up so badly you have been so disrespectful to mother nature, to yourselves, 
you're not taking care of yourselves. And just, it was like somebody shaking out the, you know, the, uh, the figurative or the proverbial carpet. And it's going to disappear. It's just going to disappear. God, right. no. no, but I just think it's a total reset. And I love what you said, Jen, because I'm definitely out of it. And, um, uh, I just, I, I want to leave you with this quote, which I love. And this is like a salute to, um, to John Cleese. And it says, laughter connects you with people. It's almost impossible to maintain any kind of distance or any sense of social hierarchy when you're just howling with laughter. Laughter is a force of democracy. So with love that... that. I love we that. We need laughter now more than anything. Would you all concur? Yes, 100%. Yeah, I mean, God, you, um, you know, during this- And time, they're great, and like they're great. Them, and, or do, do Facebook Live, but sometimes I'd take puppets or myself and do these Trump- They're funny. Art, and, and it just, it got me through because it was also a very testy time in politics. What direction are we gonna go? Are we gonna right. get off Hitler for the next four years again? Are we going to, you know, now we're in a good place. Now we're yes. in a really, really, really good place. Yeah. So um, I just want to say, you guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I wish you happy holidays and the biggest success for how am I doing in all the projects that you're working on without me? I just really am so happy. I'm teasing, you know, it's on my vision board to work with the two of you and Ken, we've talked about it and Jen and yeah. I'm, let's, I'm looking forward to 2021. Ken and I are already, have already discussed working with you. So yep, we will yep. discuss in detail later. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yep. listen, thank you. Thank you. I love the two of you. Thank you for thank spending you. time with me. I love me. you guys. And that's a wrap, okay.